container is like the variable, right? So we are saying that when you declare a variable as with let, it allows you to throw out the contents and put something else inside, right? That's with the let. But when you declare a variable with const, that means once you pour coke inside, it has become a cup of coke forever. You cannot put coffee inside again. It's not a cup of coke. It has to remain a cup of coke. You understand? The only thing you can do in, the, in that case is you, you is using the word mutation. You can mutate the contents. You cannot put sugar into your coffee. You can only have to it or remove from it, but you can't change entirely the content of that cup anymore. Once you declare it with const, right? So there's something called an array, he, which is like he's jumping ahead of himself, but an array is like that kind of, imagine a wardrobe, right? So I've said a variable is like, say, a, a, a cup, right? So it's only one content per time. But imagine a wardrobe. Even though a wardrobe can take um, certain kind of item per time, which is close, but inside the wardrobe, you have partitions. So I can arrange maybe my, my sneakers or my shoes at the bottom of the wardrobe. I can arrange on the second layer my trousers or something. So it's still a, a wardrobe, it's still a couple, it's still a wardrobe, right? But it now has partitions where I can put different kind of content in the same wardrobe. So that's an array. So an array is like a wardrobe with different partitions that allows you to put different kind of content. So my name that you are seeing on your screen is a variable. It can only take a particular type of content per time, which is online in this case. But my country is an array and it has partitions that can take one, two, or three. So it's like, an, it's a, it's like a, a wardrobe that can take different values at a time. You get, that's an array. So it's now saying that once you have an array that you declare with const, even though we have said earlier on that you cannot really change the content of a constant variable, you can add to the variable or to the values in that variable. Like you can rely, maybe you can, in your wardrobe now, if you have three partitions before, you can tell your carpenter to come and add one partition for you and reduce the size of the other ones. That's it. So that's what it says. So this is my country. The value currently is an array, and you can now push. So when you, when you, when it's using dot push for, it's actually kind of adding another value into the array, and it can call, it can be adding. You can push an additional one. You can push additional one. You can push. So push is a function in JavaScript that allows you to add content to an array, which is like jumping way way ahead. So that's why you guys are confused. But don't worry, you get there. You will see functions and all of that. But just in your head right now, what we're trying to break down to you is that. The difference between a variable and a constant is that a variable, the content can always change. A const, the content cannot change, but you can manipulate the content. You can add sugar to it, you can remove from it. I think that's it. I'm not sure. Is it clear now? Yes, All right, so Lekon, please continue. Okay. So, yeah, so that was that about the uh, variables. So then we move to the next one which are the data types. So, what are, so data types actually. Uh, you can tell them how to comment out like that so that they will not delete their own job. Okay, so yeah, what I've done here is a uh, comment. So I've commented out my uh, code. So if you are using a Windows, it is control forward slash. Control forward slash, so this, this is a comment. So when you run your code, it it uh, ignores this. It doesn't do, it doesn't do anything to it. So it does leave. That's it. if you are on VS Code anyway. That command is for VS Code only. No, no plus plus plus. <laughs> All right, go ahead. Okay. So then, yeah. So we we are moving to data types now. So your data when you hear of data types in programming, so data types are basically uh uh I I draw pretty. They are basically the uh different types of uh different types of way of letting your computer or of you know, letting the computer know the type of data you're actually dealing with so it's going to know how to compile them so you, you get I, I don't know if you understand what i'm trying so what i'm trying to say now is use data type to tell your computer that yeah this data i want you to do it in i want this this uh, yeah this data this is actually how it is. And when, when the computer sees how that data is, it then tries to compile it based on what you said it is. So in, yeah, in JavaScript, we have uh, different types of data types. And we have actually been using some of them. So one of them is this, is this Ola guy. So Ola here is called a string. So 
Okay, let me write them out. Number one, you have a string. You have a number. You have something you call a float. You have a, uh, you have an object. You have a function. I think you also have an array. Yeah, so uh, these are the ones that I can actually remember. So if you check online, uh, you, you could it's probably you see more of them. But these are like the most popular ones that you, of, you, you use often. So how do you write a string? So to write a string is, is, is actually very simple. So you start with your two semicolon. So if you are using uh, Windows, you press Shift, then the uh, semicolon. Um, I mean the quotation mark rather, not same color, quotation mark. And then you write whatever you write inside is going to call me. So I want to write David. David. So as I've written this, yeah, the compiler knows, okay, this guy is a string. And then it compiles it as a string. Do you guys understand? Yes. Yeah. So th this is how you write a string. So then this string now we can actually uh we can we can uh, what's it called? We can assign it to a variable. So to do that, let's assign it to a variable. Const. So we've assigned the string David to a uh, to a constant called facilitator. So we can we can view let's use console.log this time instead of alert facilitator. So when you run your code inside of your uh, VS inside of the this thing, you should see David in the console. Can you guys see that? Yeah. I'll try that. Let us see what we'll tried. So anytime you see anything in quotes, it's a string automatically. Anything you see within the quotes, the JavaScript understands this to be a string. So the quote is what identifies as a string. It can be a single quote, it can be a double quote. Yeah, so do, do, do we get that? All right, so, so that's that about string. So we can, let's move to the number. The, yeah, we, we can, we declare a number. A number is actually a number. So two is a number, three is a number, four is a number, five is a number. So that's, that's just how, when, when your JavaScript sees it, it knows, it knows that, oh, this guy is a number. <laughs> you, you guys get, so when we do console.log, Uh, my number, and then we check our console. We see it's a number. So the one thing I want you guys to know is when you have five and five like this, they're actually different. So what do you guys think is the difference? Um. Okay, so that that's actually yeah, that's the correct answer. So if you do five with a uh, quote and and we log it in uh, to the console, it's still but it's still showing as five, but it's actually a string if you should look at it. There is there is a huge difference when when it is a number, the color changes. If you should look closely. 
when we declare it as a number, it's kind of blue. But once it is a string, it's kind of black. So if you should look closely, you should, uh, you should get that. So we move to uh, a float. So if you said, I didn't hear you. I should explain what? The number you just did, right? Yes. So it's just declaring a variable called my number. That's, that's anything you, that you type in front of const or let. It can be anything. It's just any word. Any word you put in front of it is acceptable. So that const is what makes what you just type in front of it a variable. Then it's current, uh, currently explaining to you integers, right? And integers are any number between zero. Um, it can be minus, but that would be a whole number, right? So it can be zero to whatever number, one billion, or in the negative. You get so it can be negative or positive, but they are all whole numbers. So it can't be a dot, it can be five point, it can it cannot be five point something or five, you know. So that's what's correctly explaining, right? So what's the question again? You should explain how it did that or so do you do you understand now, Oba? All right, you can go ahead, Lekon. I think someone is trying to ask a question. Okay, so let's let's move to a flute. So, uh, so like you said earlier, the difference between the number and the float is a number has to be a, a, a whole number. Like it's it has, it has to be an integer, like something like this. So, but when it when 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 you have a number that is like this. When you have a number that is like this, uh, five point whatever, sorry. When you have a number that is like this, so this already is no longer a number. It is a float, it's called a float because of the points you have here, because of the decimal. Sorry, why are you typing in? Why am I typing in? Why, why is this one? Um, Moshe, I need a question. Why is the L O A T in capital letter? Oh, it's actually uh, that, that's an error. So um, the thing is, the thing is in JavaScript there is actually uh, a uh, what's it called a best practice. So yeah, a convention of writing of declaring of, of of declaring variables. So when you want to declare a variable, there is something you call when it is being written like this, like my number for instance, where you start with a small letter and then the other uh, second number you are trying to uh bring together the with it and then you have something like a capital letter in between so this is called a camel case so it's it's a conversion so in python like if i want to write this in python i write something like this i can write it like this my number so this is called a snake case so th this this is called a snake case this is called a camel case so you can actually, uh, after the class, you can go back, you can go online and check for the, uh, for the types of the different type of ways of, uh, or should I say the best practice of how you can write uh, your variables. So you can decide to write it anyhow you like. But the thing is, okay, we get an error, it's, uh, it's saying it is not defined. So that's not what I'm trying to, you can just ignore that one. So the thing is, my number now, like you can write it anyhow, but then for, you know, your code, someone, has, someone is going to maintain it, right? So when the person sees this, my number, like the way you've written it, like the person already knows that, oh, this guy, this guy has declared a variable here. So he goes around to check for a variable. You're, you get, so it's very easy to add that when, they see, so when someone sees your code, the person can easily identify that, okay, this is a variable. 
or like when you start using like different styles of uh, writing the view and things like that. So uh, is that, I don't know if that is that if that uh, answers your question. Yes, go ahead, go ahead. All right. So I was talking about the flute the other time. So I said when you have a number and then it has a decimal place uh, in it, so it becomes a flute automatically. So it's very different from this old number that we have here. So let's when you do console.log flute, uh, my flute. Oh, okay, this is a flute. So we have, when we check the console, we see the num, we see the values here. So the next data type you go to is an object. So uh, an object, when you hear of an object, this is how you write an object, but, uh, basically. This uh, something like this is called an object, this. Oh, yeah. This guy is called an object. So an object basically allows you to uh, write um, a, a, it's a it's a data type that kinds of bring to it brings together like uh, similar types of data. What I mean by similar type of data now is you could have a a, a data that has um, okay um, okay I'm trying to check for something. All right. So you could have you could have a kind of data that has uh, that contains. Okay, let's say I have my name. Okay, uh, uh, const. Let's declare a person. You get. So now this person, the data type is an object. So it has a, this person will always have a name, right? So the the person's name is Olaleko. It must have an age. So the age is you get so uh con let's say country so th this is our this is a this is an object. So an object allows you to to write to write a similar uh, it encapsulates similar, uh, should I say, properties of of a particular variable, of a particular data, or a of, or a variable. So here in this object, there, are, if you should look at it, there are two different, uh, two different. There are things that we need to take cognizance of. So this is a, this name here, which is on the left hand side, is called a property. So when you when you are uh, over. Um, when you over around this, uh, when you over on this name, you see something like property. If you are using Visual Studio Code, if you are not using Visual Studio Code, I don't think any other text editor, maybe Sublime, you could see something like this is Sublime. Okay. But this on the left hand side is called a property, and then this on the right hand side is called a value. Do we do we get that? So this person has a name property, and Person uh, as it has an age property with a value of ninety. It has a country property with a value of Nigeria. So then, you actually um, if you, the object as it is is actually a topic on um, a very big topic on its own in JavaScript. So when you hear of something like object, you there's something called uh, a class. So all of those things are they are kind of a big topic on its own in JavaScript, which uh, if we are going to treat it actually, it's going to take like a special class on its own for it. So just to just to have an intuition of what's going on. So this is basically what an object is like. An object is basically something that has a it has a property and then a value. So I, I, did you guys get me? Yeah. Yeah. So to so now to get this uh, value of this person, let's let's log it. Let's see what's going to happen in the console. So you, you can, if you go to your console now, you see something like, like this. It has age, it has country, it has name. You, you, you get. So we could assess each 
um, there are, um, there may be uh, certain times that we just want a particular property of this object. We don't want to see everything. So we could come here and say person dot name. So person dot name will only return. It's going to just log just the name for us to the console, which we can see here. We could say okay person dot age. So we see just ninety. We could say person dot country. So we see Nigeria. You said? You can just person. person. Yeah, so yeah, person will give you everything like what we have on the first uh the first console here. Yeah. So did you did we get that? Huh? So can I can I move on to the next? Can I move to the next? Yeah, you can. We are going on a short break. So minutes. Okay, sir. All right. So we have a function. We move to so. Someone is trying to ask a question. <laughs> no, it's not a question. Okay, so I, I think for now, let's just quickly go on that short break because um, uh, I think it's already becoming a lot. So we're going to take a five minutes recess, everyone. Go over what you've written so far, the integers, the variables. Talk to the guys in the room. Let them show you stuff I don't understand. Try everything. Make sure your log, your console log, log is working. And then we'll be back in five minutes. It's, it's not a if this is not our major break. It's just a recess. Just stretch yourself, stand up, go to the restroom, come back. And five minutes break, we'll be back. And then if you are just, you don't have anywhere to go, just be staring at your laptop. And looking at it. So we'll be back in five minutes. Thank you. Thank you. 